Greetings. My name is Robert Messina, and it's been impressed upon me to to create this video so that I could help those that want to know more about the revelations of the four living creatures that are in Revelation and also Ezekiel and also are mentioned without too much of a description in in Isaiah chapter 6 they're called the seraphim the first chapter I will I will comment a little bit but I I don't really need to the words are self-explanatory in the beginning of the first chapter when it mentions the four living creatures one with the face of a lion another with another as an eagle another as an ox or a calf, um, another as a face of a man, you kind of wonder what they are. And there's not that many comments in the commentaries, and there's not that pe many people that really f have a full grasp of this. And my in my previous videos, there were a few... Uh, that I mentioned what I think they were, like in the, my 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 video for the signs and for the seasons, how forty eight ancient celestial signs identify the Messiah, and I believe the celestial signs, the zodiac signs, the twelve zodiac signs, and their accompanying um, constellations. Each sign has four constellations. In that video, I do mention it, what I think the um, four living creatures are, but I, I don't think, you know, it made sense to me, but I, not too many people grasped it. I mean, nobody, you know, comes up to me and says, hey, thanks for that. Nobody. Nobody even makes a comment. You know, I don't, I don't really care. I got to do my part, which is share with you what I think about it, which I don't see as an easy thing. To, anything that's really not that easy to understand, and I am a person that um, I'm, I believe I'm gifted with uh, understanding mysteries. I just have that gift. I'm not bragging about that, but it's been given to me, and I should share when I do fully understand a mystery that is truly a mystery I like to share it and this is a great way to share it okay so let's just go dive right in and um, start reading that wonderful book that I treasure very much the book of Revelation chapter 1 Verse 1, the revelation of Jesus Christ, which God gave unto him to show unto his servants, us, things which must shortly come to pass. Shortly come to pass. Now, this was 2,000 years ago, but a 1,000 years to God are as one day, so it was only two days ago. But if it was 2,000 years ago, and this would shortly come to pass, now it's even shorter that it's going to come to pass. Much, much, much shorter. It's almost right upon us right now with, with all of, when all of this is going to happen. It's about to unfold as, almost as we speak, but not yet. So, which must shortly come to pass, and he sent and signified by his angel unto his servant John. So this is John of Zebedee, the brother of James, and he, he was one of the three top three apostles, Peter, James, and John. He, as an apostle, represents the identity of Jesus as the Word of God. And if you look at everything he writes, he talks about the Word of God very much. Who bear record of the word of God, there it is, chapter 
um, verse 2, who bear record of the word of God and of the testimony of Jesus Christ, I like to say Yehoshua HaMashiach, and of all things that he saw. Blessed is he that reads and they that hear the words of this prophecy and keep those things which are written therein. Why? For the time is at hand. Things which must shortly come to pass. The time is at hand. It's upon us, people. It is. Verse 4, John, to the seven churches which are in Asia. Now, there's no more seven churches in Asia right now. But this was the beginning and the first seven that um, were given a lot of refinement in chapter 2 and 3 that I'm not going to read. But you should, everybody should read it. Um, grace be unto you and peace from him which is and which was and which is to come. That's the, he's eternity. He has no beginning. He has no end. He's everlasting. He always was, always will be. And which is come. And from the seven spirits which are before his throne. These seven spirits are before his throne and they come up every now and then. For example, they're the seven eyes of the lamb. They're the seven eyes on the stone that's in Zechariah. Verse 5. And from Jesus Christ, again, Yehoshua HaMashiach, who is the faithful witness, the first begotten of the dead, and the prince of the kings of the earth. He's king of kings. He's prince of kings. Unto him that loved us and washed us from our sins in his own blood. That's the atonement that happened once. It's over. It's done with. It is finished. When he said it is finished, that's what he meant. His atonement for all the world is finished and we can at to this day we can wash ourselves in his blood and get purified of all sin you got to be purified of all sin you need that atonement you have to ask for it you have to drink of it you have to commune with him you have to abide in him you have to honor him as lord that's all part of walking with him and you can't do it without knowing that your sins are forgiven because of what he did. Six, has made us kings and priests unto God and his Father. To him be glory and dominion forever and ever. Amen. Amen is so be it. It is true. You agree? It is true. 7. Behold, he comes with clouds, and every eye shall see him, and they also which pierced him, and all kindreds of the earth shall wail because of him, even so. Amen. So this is, behold, he comes with clouds. Remember, when he went up, he went up into the clouds. Right now, he's seated at the right hand of the Father. And then he's going to come back. Behold, he comes with clouds, and every eye shall see him. And they also which pierced him. That's a, that's a prophecy in Zechariah as well. Zechariah 12. And all kindreds of the earth shall wail because of him. Even so, amen. So be it. It's true. Eight. Now, this is Jesus talking. I am Alpha and Omega. Alpha is the first letter of the Greek alphabet. Omega is the last. In Hebrew, it would be the Aleph, uh, the first letter, and the Tav, the last letter. In, in Hebrew, uh, um, letters also have meanings. Uh, Aleph means um, chief. 
uh, and also means ox, and it also means a thousand, as in a great number. Uh, and then Tav is the outermost marker, and it is, uh, it is it's symbolized, and originally it was symbolized as a, looking like a cross. The beginning and the ending, says the Lord, which is and was and which is to come, the Almighty. All right there, he's telling you that he's the Almighty. I, he has that I am. Which and, and I am is described as which is, which was, and which is to come. His name, God's name. Moses asked him, what, what's your name? And he said, I am that I am. That has to do with the fact that there's two I am's and they're coupled together. The way I think of it, I am the father. You say, you say, I am the father and I am the son. I am coupled with I am. Verse 9. I, John, who also am your brother and compa companion in tribulation. Now, there's going, to be a, there's going to be a great tribulation described in this book of Revelation. And John was not in that great tribulation. But he was still, a, he was still in many troubles, you could say as just because of the, that the walk that we have is always um, a challenge and a hard, sometimes a hardship and hurts sometimes. And um, it isn't all very nice. There's always an enemy. Uh, it's always uh, Satan is always up against us, hurting us and making it hard for us. So he's a companion in our tribulation and in the kingdom and patience of Jesus Christ, Yehoshua HaMashiach. And he was in the isle that is called Patmos. So he was in this present world when he got this revelation for the word of God and for the testimony of Jesus Christ, Yehoshua HaMashiach. I was in this verse 10. I was in the spirit on the Lord's day and heard behind me a great voice as of a trumpet. Okay, so there's a sounding alarm of a trumpet behind him. And he says that uh, he was in the spirit on the Lord's day. Now, um, some say the Lord's day there means that it was the Sabbath. But... Um, when you think about it, every day is this is the Lord. This is the day the Lord has made. That's a psalm. It's not only a song. It's in the Psalms. It's in the Bible as being a truthful thing. This is a day that the Lord has made. He makes every single day, and He made the day that that this happened to John when he was in on that island, and he happened to be in the spirit on that day. The Lord's Day. Uh, 11, uh, saying, I am Alpha and Omega, the first and the last. There he is again. And what thou sees, write in a book and send it unto the seven churches which are in Asia, unto Ephesus. Uh, I looked that up. Some say it means permitted, permissioned. I, I kind of agree with another comment that says that it means epiophius. In Greek means look behind, look back. The Ephesians were reprimanded for not having their first love. So the, 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 the emphasis to them was, I want you to look back when, when you first loved me. The names are always relevant to the, the church itself. And unto Smyrna, that has to do with myrrh, the, the fragrance and the, and the spice and the healing virtue of myrrh. And unto Pergamos, which has to do with being a tall tower, as in a watchtower. Uh, uh, mo mostly watchtower is a part of your strength because you're always looking. You're watching f uh, for when the thief comes, you might say. And unto Thyatira, that which means the odor of affliction. 
and unto Sardi, it just means red, but it has to do with the color of blood because it has to do with um, not denying and, and, and being um, able to die because you don't want to deny. And uh, Philadelphia, unto Philadelphia, which has to do with brotherly love, which is part of his words to us. And they don't get reprimanded too much, by the way. And unto Laodicea, which has to do with um, people justice, people judgment, people vengeance. So it's got to, that Laodicea has um, got a lot to learn, and, uh, but it's not something they can't do. Twelve. And I turned to see the voice that spoke with me, and being turned, I saw seven golden candlesticks. Thirteen, and in the midst of the seven candlesticks, one like the Son of Man, clothed with a garment down to his foot, and girt about with paps with a golden girdle. It doesn't say one that looks like a man it looks like the son of man so and jesus called himself the son of man often and um he, he's referenced in daniel as the son of man came to the ancient of days and was with the ancient of days which is which is where he is now if you say the ancient of days is the father the son of man because right now he's still son of man clothed with the garment down to the foot and girt about with paps with the golden girdle. 14, his head and his hairs were white like wool, as white as snow, and his eyes were as a flame of fire, and his feet like unto br fine brass, as if they burned in the furnace, and his voice was a sound of many waters. Okay, so uh, white hair has to do with um, the, the fact that there's a lot of wisdom and there's a lot of experience and, and um, there's where his strength is right now. He's, he's, he knows a lot. He has extreme knowledge and he's, the, he's, um, he's going to share all of his knowledge, everything he knows with us when we see him. The, no, the knowledge of God is going to be like the waters that cover the sea. No, you don't have to tell any. There's going to be a time when you don't have to tell anybody. There's, there, you won't need a preacher anymore because everybody's going to know. And this white hair that he has, white as snow, has to do with that. His eyes like a flame of fire. He sees everything. And his feet like unto fine brass as if they were burned in a furnace. Okay, so if his feet took him to the Garden of Gethsemane, and his feet helped him carry the cross to got the Mount Gagav. His feet were, went, made him go through the fire, you might say. That's why his feet were refined in the fire. And his voice as the sound of many waters. Now, many waters has to do with the many people of different nations and tongues, and um, the people are also called waters. So the sound of many waters means that there's many languages, and he understands them all, and his voice goes out to all of the languages of all the, the, the men of the world, and they understand his voice, and his sheep hear his voice. 16, and he had in his right hand seven stars, and out of his mouth went a sharp two-edged sword, and his countenance was as the sun shining in his strength. Okay, so um, a two-edged sword that comes out of his mouth, that has to do with um, one, uh, I'm giving you a reason to follow me, and the reason is, one reason is, you're going to be saved, you're going to be joy, you're going to have joy, you're going to have peace, you're going to have all the love of God, and it's, you're, going to, you're never going to die anymore. And every, This is one of the reasons I'm talking to you, and I want you to repent. 
the other side of the sword has to do with if you don't you're gonna go like that rich man that every day went right past Lazarus who was a beggar in front of him and who had hurts and hardships in his life and um, that man passed him every day what happened to the man the man went to uh, Hades and it was a place that he needed he just wanted Lazarus who went to the paradise of God the bosom of Abraham he just wanted a touch of his tongue he wanted Lazarus to touch his tongue and and just let him touch his tongue what just he just wanted a drop of water he wanted what he was he was dying of thirst and he was he wished he could go back into the world just to tell his brothers Jesus said oh, sorry because even if somebody came back from the dead they still wouldn't believe Jesus did come back from the dead and they still don't believe he was right and when I saw him 17 when I saw him I fell at his feet as dead and he laid his right hand upon me saying unto me fear not I am the first and the last I am he that lives and was dead and behold I'm alive forevermore amen it is true so be it I have keys of hell and of death he has the keys of hell and death because um, he overcame them he's not in there he died and he's not in there he's in the parrot he says this day you will be with me in paradise and paradise the word for garden and Eden is the word for pleasure so the Garden of Eden was the Garden of Pleasure which is where God dwells now which is where Jesus right now is today I will be in paradise I'll be in the garden and it, and if you don't you don't say the word Eden it's okay um, it's on sometimes it's totally understood that that's what he means the Garden of Eden where Adam was placed in the first place where the tree of life is and the tree of knowledge of good and bad 19 write these things which thou hast seen and the things which are and the things which shall be hereafter now notice the things which are and things that shall be so there were some things that were happening right there that day and when he went up into um, in, in four we'll get there when he went up there it was the day he was getting this vision that's when he went up he went up sort of like the same thing that happened to Paul the Apostle he was taken up into a place and the, and he's this it's the same place where where um, John went I totally believe that and and he says and the things which shall be hereafter most of what he sees is things that shall be hereafter okay 20 the mystery so the, now the mystery of the seven stars are going to be in the seven golden candlesticks so it's going to be solved in one sentence the mystery of the seven stars which thou sawest which thou sawest in my right hand and the seven golden candlesticks the seven stars are the angels of the seven churches and the seven candlesticks which you saw are the seven churches so it's a mystery but in one sentence it clears it right up and and each angel is is associated with one of the seven churches there are also seven spirits of God which go before him and they they might be the same thing I don't know that doesn't really matter but there are seven spirits that go and see things all over the earth okay Revelation chapter 4 after this I looked and behold a door was opened in heaven and the first voice which I heard was as it were a trumpet talking with me which said come up hither 
and I will show thee things which must be hereafter. So you notice it says, come up hither. He's talking to John of Zebedee, the apostle. At the time he was on Patmos. And he's coming up to heaven. And he's going to see things the same kind of way Paul the apostle came up and saw things in heaven. And other privileged saints throughout history have done that. And he will show you things that must be hereafter. He's going to show him future things. This has been referenced, this come up hither, hither has been referenced to pre-tribulation rapture. Okay, that's a pretty big stretch. He's talking to one man. One man goes up, and that same man comes down. And, and so that is not a rapture. There's no, there's no uh, resurrection of the dead. When the, when the rapture happens, there's a resurrection of the dead. Do you see a resurrection of the dead there? Okay, let's just let's just forget this as a as a reason for the pre pre tribulation rapture, and they use it because they don't really have anything. There is no verse that says that. Uh, that's just something I got to say. Okay, let's keep going. And immediately I was in the spirit. Okay, he's in the spirit. He's not in the flesh, he's in the spirit. And behold, a throne was set in heaven, and one sat on the throne. And he that sat was to look upon like a jasper and a sardine stone. And there was a rainbow round about the throne, in the sight like, like unto an emerald. And round about the throne were four and twenty seats. Okay, four and twenty seats. Now, I'm not the only one who thinks this. Lots of commentaries think that 24 seats for the 12 patriarchs, 12 sons of Jacob, and the 12 apostles. And I, th I think that each apostle relates to one of the 12. So there's, they, they're almost in 12 groups of two. And, I saw, and upon the seats I saw four and twenty elders sitting clothed in white raiment, or they've been given white raiment, they've been given innocence, and they had on their heads crowns of gold. So they had crowns, crown of life, five. And out of the throne proceed lightnings and thunderings and voices. And there were seven lamps of fire burning before the throne, which are seven spirits of God. Okay, these seven spirits of God, again, go throughout all the earth, and they bring back information, and they um, see things. They are the eyes of the Lamb. Uh, six, and before the throne there was a sea of glass like unto crystal, and in the midst of the throne, and round about the throne, were four beasts full of eyes before and behind. You see that these four beasts are in the midst and they're also round about. And I'm going to point some of these things out when I give you my understanding of who these four beasts are. Again, they're full of eyes before and behind. Eyes, they see. And the first beast was like a lion. The second beast like a calf. The third beast as the face of a man. And the fourth beast, like a flying eagle. Now, I'm going to just say things like, the lion is like a majestic. He's like majesty. He's king. He's king of the beasts. The second beast, like a calf. A calf is um, a clean animal, first of all. And second of all, it is sometimes sacrificed, just like... Um, the ox, just like a cow, a calf could be a from a cow or a ox. Um, the third beast, as a face of a man, could be representing the son of man in the midst of of the throne as well. 
And it also could be representing a man that baptized, like John the Baptist. His name is John the Baptist, he that baptized. And he was the forerunner of Jesus, who also baptized. And the fourth beast, I'm giving you hints now, okay? So the fourth beast was, was like a flying eagle, okay? An eagle has claws, lacerating claws, sharp, sharp, he has a sharp beak, okay, um, that, that penetrate, you could say his victim, and sometimes it's not his victim, it's his, sometimes it's a fish that he's plucking out of the water, in the sense that the fish are men, he doesn't fish for men to harm them, he fishes men to save them. Okay, and the four beasts, which had each of them six wings about, and they were full of eyes within, and they rest night, not day and night, saying, Holy, 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 Lord God Almighty, which was and is and is to come. So they have six wings, and they have eyes, like we have eyes. There's another clue. They have eyes the way we have them. And they rest not day and night, saying, Holy, holy, holy. Now, now somebody pointed out, um, Matthew Henry actually pointed out, Holy, holy, holy represents Holy Father, Holy Son, and Holy Spirit. And I like to call him the Comforter, the Holy Comforter. Um, Lord God Almighty, which was and is and is to come. There it is, that that everlastingness character of, of God. Okay, now nine, and when those beasts give glory and honor and thanks, so they're giving them glory, honor, and thanks. They're thanking him for something that he did for them. And we're going to see that glory and honor is given by all, all creatures. To him that sat on the throne, who lives forever and forever. That, now it's constantly repeating this, forever and forever. He was, he is, he is to come, he's forever. He lives forever. He's everlasting life. It's drumming that, they're drumming that into our heads. Uh, of ten, the four and twenty elders fall down. Whenever, whenever the four beasts say holy, 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 and give thanks and all that. The four and twenty elders fall down before him that sat on the throne, sits on the throne and worship him that lives forever and ever. And they cast their crowns before the throne. In other words, they give their crowns up. They give the, the rewards that they were given up. They give them up because... They, they feel like they don't deserve them. The one who is sitting, thou art, why are four, eleven? For thou art worthy, O Lord, to receive glory and honor and power. For thou hast created all things, and for thy pleasure they are and were created. And I saw in the right hand, this is chapter 5, by the way. I saw in the right hand of him that sat on the throne, a book written within and on the backside sealed with seven seals. And I saw a strong angel proclaiming in a loud voice, who is worthy to open the book and to loose the seals thereof? And three, and no man in heaven nor in earth, neither under the earth and on the backside sealed with seven seals. And I saw a strong angel proclaiming in a loud voice, Who is worthy to open the book and to loose the seals thereof? And three, and no man in heaven nor in earth, neither under the earth, was able to open the book, neither to look thereon. Now don't forget, up there is the 24 elders. There's also Abraham, Isaac, Jacob. Abraham was, was up there. And he wasn't worthy to open that thing. Moses wasn't able. Moses is up there. Okay? Job wasn't, wasn't able. Um, Enoch wasn't able. The translated guys. Well, 
the translating. He, Job wasn't translating, but he was declared righteous. Noah wasn't wasn't uh, able. Not nobody nobody that was you know worthy in the book of books that lived as men was able to open that seal. So if a man was in heaven, he was he was passed away. If he was in the earth, he's still living. And if he was under the earth, he was passed away, and he's waiting for a judgment. He was definitely not righteous. For, and I and I wept much. Because no man was found worthy to, to open and read the book, neither to look on. You couldn't even, they couldn't even look on it. Not that not they couldn't even read it, they couldn't even look on it. What is John doing right now? He's crying. Why is he crying? Because he kind of knows that his salvation is depending on that book being open, because that book. And he kind of, I think he kind of knew it was the last seven years, and then right after this, it it, it declared when Jesus was going to come. And in order for the for him to come, this book had to be opened. It was a prophecy seal, uh, Revelation five, five. And one of the elders says to me, "Weep not. Behold, the lion of the tribe of Judah, the root of David." has prevailed to open the book and to loose the seven seals thereof. Six, and I beheld, and lo, in the midst of the throne and of the four beasts in the midst of the elders stood a lamb as it had been slain, having seven horns and seven eyes, which are the seven spirits of God sent forth unto all the earth. Amen. Thank you, Father. Right? Of uh, seven. And he came, the Lamb, came and took the book out of my right, out of the right hand of him that sat on the throne. So that must have been the Father. And, we ha and when he had taken the book, the four beasts and four and twenty elders fell down before the Lamb, having every one of them harps and golden vials full of odors, which are the prayers of the saints. Just the way John is excited that the book is getting opened, so are the four beasts, and so are the 24 elders, and they have harps praising, and they have golden vials full of odors, which are prayers of the saints. Okay, nine, and they sung a new song, saying, Thou art worthy to take the book, and to open the seals thereof, for thou wast slain, and has redeemed us to God by thy blood out of every kindred, tongue, and people, and nation. Okay, so you see right there, that, and it says, and has, thou was slain, and has redeemed us. Redeemed us. So these are men that have died and are able to be saved, and they are going to be, even though these, these guys are dead and gone, Except for John, he still has a little bit ways to go yet. <laughs> e even though they're dead and gone, that was slain and has redeemed us. Redeemed us. He bought. He so so. They're men like we are. They're saints that are saved. Okay, this is a big clue because this, they're not just angels. Angels are n are not redeemed. Five, uh, chapter five, ten. And has made us unto our gods kings and priests, and we shall reign on the earth. So when the resurrection happens, they these guys are all gonna be with us. And they're gonna be everybody's gonna be in their own lots. There's gonna be Jacob is the Israel is divided in, into twelve parts, uh, and uh, each part has an has a nation within it. And the and there's the one part for the king, for the priest, for Jesus, and that's where the Levites go, and also those that are out of the nations. Eleven, and I beheld, and I heard the voice of many angels round about the throne, and the beasts and the elders, and the number of them was ten thousand times ten thousands and thousands of thousands. Okay, so. 
right here, his angels are now included in the group. The voice of many angels round about the throne and the beasts, so the beasts are there and the elders are there and the number of them was 10,000 times 10,000 and thousands of thousands. So it's a big, huge number. So there's lots, lots and lots of angels. Saying with a loud voice, Worthy is the Lamb that was slain to receive power and riches and wisdom and strength and honor and glory and blessing. So you notice that there is no you who has redeemed. The angels join in after we give, they give thanks for redeeming us. Now the angels step in and add to, add to that uh, blessing, uh, uh, praise of God in 12. Worthy is the lamb that was slain. So they realize, the angels realize that he was worthy to be slain and receive power, riches, wisdom, strength, honor, and glory, and blessing. He was worthy of all of that, and the angels agree with that. Okay, let's keep going. Number 13, uh, 513. And every creature which is in heaven, okay, and on earth, and under the earth, and such as, and just in case you don't think that they're in the sea, and, and such as are in the sea, like fish that don't talk, birds chir chirp, but do they, they don't have your tongue, do they? On earth, under the earth, earth, because there's creatures like worms uh, under the earth, and there's, you know, like the woodchucks that, you know, the, 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 the snakes that go in. There's, there's like, um, there's creatures under the earth in holes. Um, so it could be that. But it's also fish that are in the sea, and the crabs that are in the sea, and the jellyfish. Or everything. It's it's God's creation of the animals, all the animals. But there's no there's no. I I wouldn't think that there's plants. I don't think plants are in there. That's my guess. I don't think you can. I don't think plants. I think plants are a an example of God's creation and, and His marvel. But I think that I think that a squirrel, for example, can be here and saying things, and this is what they say, blessing and honor and glory and power be unto him that sits upon the throne and upon the Lamb forever and ever. 14, and the four beasts said, Amen. The four beasts said, Amen. And the four twenty elders fell down, worshipped him, that lives forever and ever. I guess you got to say he lives forever and ever. Everybody's saying it. I say it too. Okay, um, now now we're going to open the seals. And I'm going to just talk a little bit about this. One, verse one. And I saw when the lamb opened one of the seals. And I heard, as it were, the noise of thunder. One of the four beasts saying, "Come and see." So one of the so the first the first seal is open. I think it's the first seal. This is one of the seals, and one of the four beasts say, "Come and see." So the, there's one beast that seems to be dedicated to the first seal, and and I saw and behold a white horse. And he that sat on him had a bow, and a crown was given to him. And he went forth conquering and to conquer. I'm going to say that that beast that accompanied with this first seal was the lion beast because this had a crown that's just gonna what I'm gonna say that's the way I see it and as far as the white horse goes 
uh, remember there were going to be false Christs before the the true Christ. There's going to be false messiahs before before the true messiah. Yehoshua HaMashiach. HaMashiach, the messiah. And he comes with a white horse as well. So this is going to be an imitation. That's how I see it. This is revelation. I can't add to the words. I can't. I can't add to the words, and I'm not. I'm just saying that's how I see it. I see this guy that's coming on this white horse that's given a crown, conquering, is uh, Antichrist the man. Is Antichrist the beast and Antichrist the man? And, he, and I think he represents Antichrist the man. Okay, and three, and when he had opened the second seal, I, I heard the second beast say, come and see. Now, the second beast, and there went out another horse that was red, and power was given unto him, power was in our powers, uh, that sat thereon to take peace from the earth, and that they should kill one another, and there was given unto him a great sword. So this looks like wars. Jesus said that there's going to be wars and rumors of wars and nation against nation. And this is describing that time as well. Uh, anyway, he's a red horse. He takes peace from the earth. And he's given a great sword. So I'm saying that the, the beast that represents this second seal that is with, that is there to say come and see with the second seal is a um, is the eagle the eagle is um, got the sharp claws penetrates flesh like a sword five and when he had opened the third seal I heard the third beast say come and see and I beheld and lo a black horse and he that sat on him had a pair of balances in his hand. And I heard a voice in the midst of the four beasts say, uh, A measure of wheat for a penny, and three measures of barley for a penny, and see thou hurt not the oil and the, and the wine. So this... this um, a measure of wheat for a penny, uh, it seems like it's a little bit of money for a measure, you know, the way the way inflation hits. But a penny represents a day's wages. A whole day's wages for a small measure of wheat and three measures of barley for a penny. Uh, also, a whole day's wages. So you see it's going to be fat. If this, is, this is always taken to be famine. And then famine is actually mentioned in the fourth beast. And these beasts, these, I'm sorry, these seals don't end. When the second, when the third seal ends, the fourth seal comes, the second seal is still there. The third seal is still there. So is the second, so is the first. You see the first is described, he goes to conquer. He, he goes forth conquering and to conquer. He's gonna he can, he's gonna conquer the world during this first and I think it's the first three uh, uh, the first forty two months because the beast rules for forty two months and then I believe it's the first half doesn't say it that's what I say that's what I think who is this um, beast rep uh, that says come and see for the black horse and I think that the famine is giving people on earth a hunger and a thirst. Notice the wine is mentioned as well. Hurt not, in other words, spare. Spare the oil and the wine. It's because it's scarce. So, I, like I say, I think this is uh, people on earth now are hungering and thirsting. And there's this parallel between hungering and thirsting for bread and water as much as there's a hungering and thirsting for the set your salvation of your soul.
and that causes you to repent. And so therefore, I, would, I see this, the beast that is here as the face of the man, and again, I'm going to be getting into why I think he's baptism. He represents a Baptist, John the Baptist. And Jesus also is a baptizer. Okay, and he opens the fourth seal. I heard the fourth beast say, come and see. And I looked and behold, a pale horse, and his name that sat on him was death and hell followed with him. And power was given unto him over the fourth part of the earth to kill with sword and with hunger, with death, and with the beasts of the earth. So who, the, this is only one, there's only one creature left, and that would be um, a calf. And, and I, again, a calf is a clean animal that is sacrificed. So death and hell is described on this horse on this horse, and so he would be very appropriate to um, represent this, to, to tell you to come and see this pale horse. And uh, power was given unto him over the fourth part of the earth to kill with sword, with hunger, with death, and with beasts of the earth. So uh, the way I see this, uh, is power over a fourth part of the earth, I think, I think 25% um, of creatures, including men, are, are to die here. Now, again, it's with the sword. So the sword never went away. With hunger, the famine never went away. And with death, this is the third thing that's coming, death. Uh, an, an enormous amount of death, the pestilence of the beasts that help, help, help it. The, the viruses, that the deadly viruses that are out there uh, uh, kill men and the animals too. Now, um, I just want to uh, point out Matthew 24, uh, verse, Matthew 24, 13. But he that shall endure unto the end, the same shall be saved. Okay? You got to endure to the end without denying him. And if we die without denying him, that's okay. 14. And this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world for a witness unto all nations, and then shall the end come. There's a time that the, there's no more preaching, and the end shall come. 15. When you therefore shall see the abomination of desolation spoken by Daniel the prophet stand in the holy place. And he thinks this is important to understand. So he says, whoso readeth, let him understand. Then let them which are in Judea flee to the mountains. Let him which is on the housetop not come down to take anything out of his house. Neither let him which is in the field return back to take his clothes and woe to unto them that are with child and to them that give suck in those days but pray ye that your flight be not in winter neither on the sabbath day the sabbath day is very important to him he can't even run he doesn't even want you to run on the sabbath day uh, 21, 21 for then shall the great tribulation such as was not since the beginning of the world to this time, no, nor never ever shall be. And, 22, and except those days be shortened, there shall no flesh be saved. But for the elect's sake, those days shall be shortened. So you can see the elect, I consider myself an elect because I'm elected to know the gospel and the salvation of Jesus. And I'll be there because it says the elect sake shall the, the, those days shall be shortened so the elect are in the tribulation this is tribulation the great tribulation there was 21 for then shall be great tribulation such as was not since the beginning of the world until this time which is the end of the world it's never gonna the, the, the tribulation is never gonna be worse than this and 
what describes it the most? Well, there's two there's two things that describe it the most, but the fourth seal is one that describes it the most. And the second thing that describes it is this is the sixth trumpet. And the the sixth um vial. Because after the seven se seven seals, there's seven trumpets, and that sixth one is a bad one. A third of the earth is dead in, the, in that one. But I think that after the reign of the beast for 42 months, there's this abomination of desolation as spoken by Aunt, uh, Daniel the prophet. I think that that is, again, I don't want to add to any words, but there are evidence that that this guy exalts himself as God. So when he does that, when he exalts himself as God, that's when let him who's in Judea flee to the mountains. You know, get out, don't no, no, run the great tribulation. And I and again, it could be the great tribulation that begins there. Well, but you had tribulation. You had tribulation before the fourth seal. This moment, and don't forget, his anti uh, the beast's reign ends. This is the middle of the seven years. After this is the time, time, and dividing of times. And that's when the second beast takes over, and he's considered to be the false prophet. And he. He's the one who sets up an image of the first beast. That you have to worship that image or else you are going to die. And as, and as far as denying him goes, if, uh, if you don't take the mark of the beast, you can't buy or sell. So there's, there's two great temptations that are going to come across, uh, come over the earth for everybody. And the saints and the elect and those that believe in Jesus uh, and those that believe in the Father in heaven in, whole, in spirit and in truth, by the way, are, are amongst us and represented as the remnant or the 144,000. I believe they honor and obey the Father and his words and his laws. And they are loved. And they don't even know that they have a good shepherd and it's Yehoshua HaMashiach. They don't know him as Yehoshua HaMashiach. But they're still listening and obeying his voice. His sheep know his voice. Okay. These four living creatures are described elsewhere in the Bible. Namely, Isaiah 6 and Ezekiel has it in two places, the first chapter and the tenth chapter. So I'm going to um, go over the differences and why I think they are the same for living creatures, even though they're described differently. And I'll give my opinion as to why they are described differently. All right, so let's go to Isaiah 6, verse 1. In the year that King Uzziah died, I saw also the Lord sitting upon a throne, high and lifted up, and his train filled the temple. That word train, it's the hem of his garment. It's the hanging part of his, what he's wearing. It fills the temple. And above it stood seraphims. Each one had six wings. With twain he covered his face. With twain he covered his feet. And with twain he did fly. You can see that they have wings and they fly. And, that's, and they have six wings here, the same number as Revelation. Six, three. And one cried unto another, saying, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is full of his glory. So similarities as they say the same thing. 
uh, they have six wings and um, they also are about the throne of God is where they abide about and within the midst of the throne now there's no mention that there are four we're not told what the faces look like we don't see any eyes in the wings and um, the name is not given living creature it's giving it's given um, seraphim a seraph is what Moses put on a pole the brazen brazen serpent that he put on the pole to, uh, and as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness so shall the son of man be lifted up that word for the the serpent there is seraph I looked it up the word has to do with fire and it's mo mainly a, a, a color the color of the brazen the brass certain color of brass it's like that it's got that yellow fire color it's related to the serpent because of the serpent is a, a, a destructive you know Satan destroys Dan's sign is a serpent and it, it Dan means judge and and God's judgment uh, in in Ezekiel chapter 10 one of the faces instead of a calf or an ox because the chapter one Ezekiel has it as an ox Cha and Revelation has it as a calf and again I'm saying it's a sacrificed animal clean sacrificed animal Jacob said that Naphtali is a hind let loose or a deer a deer is a sacrificed animal the sign of of um, Naphtali is the goat Capricornus the goat is a sacrificed animal as well a clean animal so you have different animals that can represent different clean sacrificial animals and the same thing goes with beasts of burden a beast of burden could be a horse it could be a donkey it could be um, an ox Taurus uh, the ox is is, is the um, is Isha, Issachar sign who who uh, represents uh, Jesus as being the uh, burden bearer uh, Naphtali a sacrifice now the interesting thing is that in Ezekiel chapter 10 we don't get the, the face of the ox we get the other three but we don't get the face of the ox or the calf we get a face of a cherub okay the face of a cherub and and Ezekiel uh, chapter 10 describes the living creatures as being cherubs cherubim angel well and we we typically think of cherubs as being angels so there is a Hebrew word for angels and if a cherub could only be an angel why would you have a different Hebrew word for cherub and um, what I'm saying is it a cherub represents a spiritual being that flies now the main thing about cherubs is that they fly and they are they are in the spirit they're always in the spirit and uh, well we made a stat we make statues of the cherubs you know we have the ark of the covenant has two statues and they have wings that touch see wings there's always wings they're always flying um, but not always <laughs> and um, and they most of the time they represent angels but they can represent a man that uh, is in the spirit or has died and passed away and once you die and pass away you're you are able to fly 
and you are able to go up and you do go up and you could go up into uh, the bosom of Abraham where God's throne is or you could go to the the place you don't want to go and that's the whole reason for all the study and all the all the uh, the, the um, care and concern that we should have because we don't want to go there that's very 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 important okay we know that in um, Isaiah there's more than one but we don't know how many uh, living creatures there are in Revelation we are told there are four living creatures and there's one face for each creature Ezekiel seems to confuse that to make it look like there's four living creatures, but each one has four faces. And I, I don't. I think that's just a matter of misunderstanding of the the Hebrew word echad, which means one. Now, when when we say the Lord our God is one God. That's there. That's a Jewish argument as where you can't have Father, Son, and Holy Spirit because it says we have one God. They can't all be gods if we. But however, they, you know, uh, Elohim is plural. And when God said, uh, "Let us make man," let us make man in our image. They, he was using, they were using plural terms for God. So it's more than one God. Okay. <clears throat> so I would like to clear up uh, how Ezekiel seems to say that there are four living creatures and each of the creatures has four faces. Well, I contend that they only have one, they each only have one face. Four creatures with one face, the way, the same way um, Revelation describes it. I think they are, they are the same uh, creatures th that are being described in both books. Okay? And a lot of it has to do with the Hebrew word echad. Because echad means one. But it means a uh, literate properly means, according to Strong's, united. It's the numeral one, and it also has to do with being united. So, like, sort of like two, the two flesh become one flesh. Right? So, that's the idea. They're, they're one in you uni being united. Now, to, to clarify it, I, the best way I could explain it is to go to uh, Numbers chapter 2 where each tribe, each of the 12 tribes was to pitch around the tabernacle and in the middle would be the tribe of Levi, the priests and Joseph was divided into Ephraim and Manasseh. That's the way they set themselves around the tabernacle in the wilderness. And Numbers 2.2 2 says, Every man of the children of Israel shall pitch by his own standard. Okay, a little flag, a little something, a little symbol, with the ensign of their father's house, far off about the tabernacle of the congregation shall they pitch. Uh, and three, just to do one, and, and on the east side toward the, towards the rising of the sun shall they have, shall they of the standard of the camp of Judah pitch through their armies and Na Nashon and the son of Amimadad shall be the captain of the children of Zeus, Judah. Okay, so, so Judah is going to be on the east side. All right? And his standard, as I see it, is a lion. All right? Along with Judah are two other tribes, Issachar and Zebulun. Issachar is uh, an ox. 
uh, and or 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 a donkey or or a, a burden bearing animal, and um, Zebulun is uh, sometimes he's a ship like the Ark, and sometimes um, he's um, a uh, he's a gate of men. In, in in the zodiac, he's the gate of men. It used to be, uh, used to be the gate of men. Now it's Cancer, which has a has still has the idea of protection, because he's the good shepherd, the gate of men. He, I am the door. I am the good shepherd. I protect my sheep. He has to do with being a good shepherd, protecting us. So, and then um, I'll just verbally say it on the south side the chief tribe there's one chief tribe okay and those are the symbols that you're going to be getting the chief tribe on the south was reuben and his identity uh is actually a bucket as in water and um the face of a man represents john the baptist as i've been saying because uh, he baptizes with water. And Jesus was also a baptizer. And he baptized with the Holy Spirit. All right? So all of these are going to have, all of the 12, all each of them have an identity of Jesus. All right? Now, on the west side uh, is um, e Ephraim and Manasseh. And they, I, I believe they're both eagles, sons of Joseph. Joseph carried the identity of Jesus being the archer or the word of God with a sharp um, piercing into the heart that Jesus has, causing people to, to repent. That was his identity. Now, uh, alongside him uh, um, was also Benjamin. Benjamin was the, uh, the twins. Uh, and um, the twins had um, the identity of dual nature of, of Jesus, how he was both king of kings and he was foot washing. He was humble and he was royal. And the two stars in the twins, in the sign of the Gemini twins, uh, are um, um, Castor and Apollos. Castor has to do with being um, humbled and servant and and um, Apollos has to do with being um, Lord. And Paul, by the way, in Acts, Paul goes on a chip that says that's the Castor and Apollos in Acts. So it's, it's actually giving verification to all this stuff. And so on the north side, we have... Um, the, 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 the chief tribe is Dan, and his his symbol emblem is a serpent, and um, he um, he represents the judgment of uh, Israel, and um, his his zodiac sign is the scorpion, and there's also a serpent in that sign. There's oh, there's four constellations within each tribe sign and um and the other one is hercules it's also known as uzdabar which is hebrew for strong word a strong word keeps scorpion in check and there's a character named ophifi okifius who is a serpent holder and he keeps um the serpent in check. The idea here is that that each tribe has thousands of men in each tribe, and there are three tribes on each side. So what, there are thousands, there are thousands of thousands on each side, and um, on each each side has one emblem. And each side represents one living creature, but they're made up of many. They are called one living creature, and they're made up of three tribes and many 
men in each tribe. And you can go to Numbers and look at all the numbers of each tribe in that same chapter 2 of Numbers. I'm saying that altogether you have 12 tribes around, around the uh, uh, tabernacle, and you also have Levi, Le Levi within the midst of the tabernacle, right with them. So there's actually 13 tribes because Ephraim and Nasser are doubled of Joseph. That's how I see it. I see it that um, when, they, when they are referencing a living creature, they're using the word one. And where, when they're referencing the um, entire group, they're using the word one. All right? So when they say that each one had four faces, what they that the word each isn't really what the the, the only word in there is echad. So so uh, it's really to the one was four faces, meaning the entire group around the tabernacle. The group around the tabernacle had four faces. The one group. It's using the word one, meaning many. And the same thing with the four with the four uh, wings. And and that's even more confusing because each creature had four wings, not six like Revelation, but they had two extra hands. So, so you, you know, because one was Old Testament, one was New Testament, that probably had something to do with it. But I don't know. Well, all I know is it still seems like the same beast, the same living creature, the same seraphim as Isaiah said. The clue to what I'm saying here is in Ezekiel, because he's the one that messed it up a little bit. Um, it seemed like he messed it up anyway. Uh, Ezekiel 1, 5. And out of the midst, there came the likeness of four living creatures. So there it is, four living creatures, the likeness of four living creatures. And this was their appearance. They had the likeness of a man, of a man. And, the, and that word for man there is Adam, and it's singular. There's one man that they, all four of them, have a likeness of one man. OK? So now the light, and each, each one of them has a different uh, face. I'm saying each one of them has one different face. And that is the face, that is the face that is represented by the, the main tribe in each of the four directions. Judah is the lion. Reuben is the man. He's got the face of a man, which, you know, if they have the face of a man, and by the way, there's one of his faces is a man, it's, it's hard to understand. But one of them is a man that represents John the Baptist. And the other one, the man that they all have a likeness to, because they all are carrying identities of the Messiah. The lion is a king of beasts. There's all, they all have, all 12 of them, but you only see four. All 12 of them have identities of Jesus that points to who the Messiah is going to be when he comes. Okay? And verse 6, he says, And every one had four faces, and every one had four wings. So uh, that word for one is echad. All four of them have four faces. The group of all four have four faces. And each group 
each individual group has four wings. And, and it's so unclear, but that's how I see it. That's how it is, I believe. I very strongly believe. But, you know, if you don't want to think that um, they're the same creatures, why would they be different? I mean, why? I mean, what would change from Old Testament to New Testament? If these are the people, if these are the men that are privileged to sit round about the throne in heaven, in the Garden of Eden, in paradise, in the bosom of Abraham, in Upper Ghanidan, all, all, all of those represents the same, the same place where the, the righteous dead go, waiting for judgment. Why would it change from Old Testament to New Testament? It wouldn't. Um, that and that's my case. Um, every every sign represents an identity of Jesus, and in all of the twelve identities represent one man who is our Messiah, who is also Son of Man, the ransom for many. And that's uh, the identity that the Le Levy carries. Our sins on one side of the scale and a wineskin of his blood on the other. So when they pitched about the tabernacle in the wilderness, there were only four identities projected by the tribes. So you have the majesty, baptizer, word of God, and in the north, there was originally a, a uh, serpent um, which has to do with judging us and that was replaced with the ox or the calf or the sacrificed animal of the sign of Natali. And it's very appropriate that our judgment is covered the way the, the way the cherub covered the face of the, the the face of the ox so did the face of the ox or the face of the calf in revelation cover the the face of the the, the sign of the serpent or the judgment that was that we would we would receive if it were not for the sacrifice so you see all of this stuff comes out and it's very very hard to look at this look at these four living creatures and and say it any other way the souls of those that died in the wilderness went up by the grace of God to where God lives and served him. He was, I mean, we all have unbelief. We all don't believe. We all are called and then we believe. So, I mean, God understood and was merciful to them. So much so that he gave them a privileged spot just like the 12 sons of Jacob and the 12 apostles of Jesus. They were the 24 elders that also had a spot right in front of the throne. And they were both acting the same way, totally thankful for the one, the Lamb of God, that was in the midst of the throne that made life and everlasting life and everything they had possible. All they could do was thank him, praise him, love him, throw their crowns before him, say, holy, holy, holy is Lord God Almighty. So be it. Amen. I love it. Take care. Love. I love you in Yehoshua HaMashiach.